Last 30 minutes, I've been thinking, how do you speak once Mr. Qureshi has spoken on the stage? Okay. Uh, I wanted to talk about technology, but I think I'll, I'll, I'll change a little bit. What do restaurants do? What, what do all of us do here? We create experiences for our customers. And if you want to create experiences, either you can create something like Dal Bukhara, and for everything else, you have Drishti. So what we try to do is we, uh, Drishti is an organization, a little, little bit about us. Uh, don't read on, from the slide. I think it's too verbose. But we are an 11 years young organization. I'm one of the co-founders. I'm a computer science engineer by education and a foodie by habit. The core business is where you, as a business provider, is interacting with your customers for various reasons. Now, in the olden days, the experience started when the food came on your plate. And as soon as you tasted it, you sort of formed a picture. But today, the experience is coming from a lot more sources, and I'm going to talk uh, a few of them. Uh, people are ordering food from your call centers. People are uh, writing about you on Facebook. Uh, people are talking to your dealers. Your dealers are talking to you. So, so there's a whole ecosystem, which is what is representing your brand and is defining what your experience is. And it's not just the experience of entering your restaurant or hotel uh, and tasting the food. Some of the customers that we have worked with, most of them are from large B2C providers. So if you book a cab on Meru today or Ola today, or if you order anything from Snapdeal, Jabong, Flipkart, you land up on our platform, whether it's through voice, email, SMS, chat, social media. I'm going to cover something from the restaurant industry in Indonesia that I discovered, and we work with them uh, as a case study in a later presentation. The product that we have is called Ameo. It's a Sanskrit word which means boundless. And essentially, it's a customer interaction management tool. So whether your customers are coming in through, as I said, any of the mediums, phone, email, chat, social media, anything but physical, uh, we would be able to sort of handle that interaction. Uh, so what do we mean by handling interaction? Uh, let me give you an example. All of us uh, are carrying mobile phones. We call up call centers uh, for our telecom operators or even uh, food. Let's say we are on pizza. And, uh, you call in, you order your pizza, and let's say there's a delivery delay, you call in again, and the guy again asks you who you are. What if we knew that if, the, if, the, if this guy has called in the last half an hour, his call should be on priority, and I should not put him on hold while other, other people are ordering, uh, uh, you know, giving a new order. So, so that's what I mean by handling interactions, which means you intelligently prioritize what is important for you right now, uh, you want to segment customers for the reason they are coming to you uh, and not just as, as a general uh, single phone line uh, that happens. Another interesting example which we are recently implementing for a different business, Motila Loswal, which is a stockbroker, is that they had a very big central call center where everybody can come in and uh, sort of have a uniform experience. However, uh, Motila Loswal has 500 franchisees uh, across India where also people call in. And they wanted that a similar brand experience a similar customer experience, a similar relevance of customers should be translated down to the franchisees. So we implemented a system where all 500 branches now have exactly the same customer experience, whether they come on voice, email, chat, social media, and the central team can then monitor how the franchise is doing. So two things that I want to talk about, how do you differentiate through brand, brand and experience? First is uniformity of experience across franchisees, and I'm talking about experience which is not physical. So, so if people are coming on social media, if people are coming on Facebook, if people are coming on uh, emails, chat, and voice, which is about 80% of interactions today, they should get a uniform experience and you should be able to monitor it. The second is what my friend really mentioned. Uh, this is a social age. If I don't like something, I immediately tweet about it. So one needs to be very, very proactive on how you want to perceive brand, uh, how you want your brands to be perceived and how you want to react to those things. Uh, so for example, let's say if I'm ordering from your restaurant and immediately you can see that I had ordered in the past and I have had a bad experience, can I, as an order taker, immediately respond to it? That I saw, we, we understand that there was a bad experience that you had, we are sorry about it. That kind of experience will probably nullify the, the bad experience he had and he'll give you another chance. 
One case study that I want, I'll, I'll keep it very, very, very short and quick. One case study that I wanted to share, it's, a, it's a probably a take home idea for all of you. Uh, there's a fast food, uh, seafood restaurant in Indonesia. It's a chain called Decost, where, where they have a, a model of variable pricing. So for example, the pricing is based on how occupied the, the uh, franchisees are. And they publish it through social media, uh, and they're available in very, very busy localities. So if the price drops down, you know, uh, uh, you, you see more footfall. That's a very interesting idea, and they implemented this in conjunction with our technology on customer experience. Uh, finally, as a consumer, I have a request. You, uh, a lot of you are into creating experiences for differentiated market segments. Somebody said you should identify gaps in the market. I'm a father of autistic child, and as a couple, we would want to have an experience where a special child can be handled by the restaurant. Yeah, if you can create that experience, I'm sure there's a market for it. Thank you so much.